For understanding the history and nature of the rock formation, it is necessary to collect stratigraphic data in systematic manner to know how rocks were deposited and what changes took place after their deposition. It would also be possible to know about the nature of basin in which the deposition took place. Hello and welcome everyone to Asimath Education. I am Amit Mistra and in this video presentation, we will learn about stratigraphic data collection. And in the coming video presentation, we will learn about the stratigraphic classification and stratigraphic correlation. For collection of stratigraphic data in the field, some simple equipments are necessary. These include field dial, measuring tape, hammer with set of chisels, Brenton compass or clinometer compass, set of pencils, haversack, hand lens, etc. It is preferable to carry topographic map of the area if it is available. These are the list of some essential field equipments in order to collect the stratigraphic data. And this is the list of some specialized field equipments. From the topographical map or base map of the area, we choose a point to start the study and data collection. At this point, it is necessary to record the attitude of the beds, that is, tip and strike of the beds. If beds are horizontal, we need to look for a ravine, course, or valley. Because if we can see over here, we are walking on a horizontal terrain or bed terrain which is composed of horizontal beds, we are going to get information of one bed only. But if we are walking in a ravine in, in a gorge, then we will have information of number of beds. So if the beds are horizontal, it is necessary to see them in a profile view that can be along the ravine, that can be along the cars, that can be along the road cut, that can be along the nala cut, etc. However, if the beds are inclined or dipping, the study or data collection can be made even on a flat terrain. For example, we can see these beds are inclined and this terrain is flat over here. So if we are walking over there, we can have information of number of beds even on the flat terrain. In the dipping terrain, it is necessary to record the direction and amount of the true dip. This can be done by Brenton compass or clinometer compass. The value of highest dip is in the direction of true dip. So it is preferable to take the traverse along this particular direction. So now coming to the choosing the traverse, a traverse is a direction along which one can move and systematically collect the data. It is preferable to choose the traverse along or across the true dip direction as we can see this is the terrain, this is the true dip direction, this is across the true dip direction. So we told earlier that it is preferable to take the traverse along true dip direction because this is the direction along which we are going to get the maximum number of features, maximum number of beds. But in case you cannot take traverse along the true dip direction, then we should take traverse along as close as possible to the true dip direction. But in no case, this traverse should be taken along the strike line because along the strike line, we can see we are going to get only information of one bed because in a strike direction, even the dipping beds appears to be horizontal. In this situation, we are going to follow the beds in natural stratigraphic order of yin yin when we are going to follow the true dip direction. And if it is taken across, then we are going to get the older bit across the direction of dip. Next important step is to measure the thickness of individual beds. If the beds are horizontal and the study is being undertaken in ravine or in a gorge, the thickness of each bed can be directly measured by placing the measuring tape at right angle to the bedding plane and that is going to give us the thickness of each bed. The same technique can be applied for even the dipping strata in the gorges etc. However, in dipping strata, in a flat or sloping terrain, the outgroup width of each bed is only apparent thickness, not the true thickness. From this apparent thickness, true thickness can be calculated from this particular formula. 
true thickness is in fact the perpendicular thickness between the bedding planes and thickness in any other direction is apparent thickness that can be vertical thickness that can be horizontal thickness etc we also have to record the lithological characters in order to make lithologs together with the thicknesses so lithological characters of each measured unit will have to systematically record in the field diary this includes the nature of the rock types for example limestone sandstone shale conglomerate the nature of the bedding for example if the beds are thinly bedded beds are thick thickly bedded and the nature of sedimentary structures for example cross beddings ripple marks or any other features like color grain size etc and that's how we are going to mark different lithological characters while studying the individual rock units it is necessary to look for fossils if they are present in those rocks the larger fossils can be seen with the naked eye or with the use of hand lens all other different type fossils have to carefully extract it with the hammer and chisel however if the rock is not going to show the fossil on the surface but it may still contain some micro fossils for that purpose the rock samples need to be carried in the laboratory to extract them for the study purposes it is important to properly label these samples so that the exact location is known exact bedding plane is known from which it has been collected so this is how we are going to collect the fossil data or we are going to mark different locations of the fossils the purpose of data collection along with traverse is to prepare the stratigraphic column whatever data collection we have done here for example a structural data collection that is attitude of the beds paleontological data collections lithological data collections that is all going to be needed to prepare the stratigraphic column it is always made to scale based on the thickness of individual beds that's why we measure the thickness of individual beds if the beds are dipping and we are going to measure the thickness in terms of true thickness and we are going to make it horizontal while preparing the stratigraphic column even if the beds are faulted folded then we are going to restore to its original position that is in the horizontal manner while drawing the stratigraphic column there is a code of assuring to denote different rock types for example limestone is denoted by the bricks sandstone is by dot and horizontal broken lines etc so that's how we are going to mark different lithology we are going to mark different fossils and that's how the stratigraphic columns are prepared and now they are studied for different purposes for example for stratigraphic correlation stratigraphic correlation is in fact comparison of the rock types of different localities or rock types of different traverses and equating them with each other in respect to their different characters that is lithological characters fossil character etc so once the number of traverses has been undertaken these stratigraphic data are collected a number of litho columns or stratigraphic columns are prepared then these columns are correlated on the basis of their lithology or fossil content the thickness of each unit in different stratigraphic column may vary and that gives us the total picture of stratigraphic setting of the basin for example these are two litho columns which have taken along different traverses 
So we can see the silt stone is present in both the litho columns. Limestone is also present. The shale is present in this stratigraphic column A. It is absent in stratigraphic column B. And again, the sandstone is overlying. So this indicates that in this particular area was marked by upliftment, erosion and non-deposition during the deposition of shale. So this becomes unconformity and this becomes its correlated conformity. So that's how we correlate the stratigraphic data. What is the importance of studying stratigraphy? We know that stratigraphy is the study of layered or stratified rocks. By studying them, we can establish the Earth's geological history. It also provides us data on organisms and their evolutionary trends because we study them in systematic manner from layer by layer. While stratigraphy deals mainly with the sedimentary rocks, it also deals with the layered igneous rocks like lava flows, etc. It also deals with the metamorphic rocks and intrusive igneous rocks. So stratigraphic rocks are going to allow us to classify them into different mappable units with time controls and this is going to form the basis of other studies in order to know the earth history and evolution. If we see the economic importance of these stratified layers because we know most of the petroleum, natural gases, water that is always going to occur in the sedimentary rocks. So we can find the locations of those reservoirs by studying these stratigraphic rock. If we study the stratigraphic rock in time frame, we know that most of the reservoir rocks, they belong to particular age. So we can exactly find out those reservoirs by studying those particular rocks. In addition to provide the evolutionary history, it is also useful in studying the archaeology. With the help of stratigraphy, we can find out the distribution history of land and sea in different points of time. Together with data of fossils, stratigraphy provides us data on past climatic record as well. So stratigraphy becomes the main basis in order to make the geological time scale. We know that in stratigraphy, the sequences are made in order. The one which lie below, they are the older beds and the one which lie above are the younger beds. So on the basis of fossil content in the geological time, we can classify these units into groups and these groups are further grouped into larger units. This process is similar to a daily classification of times in seconds, minutes, hours or day. The only difference that is we not use absolute time in thousands or millions of years, but we use a relative time on the basis of change of the fossil content in the geological time scale. Now we have privilege of absolute dating because of radiometric techniques. Accordingly, the geological time scale can be prepared in which the smallest unit are ages that can be grouped together to form epoch. And epochs, number of epochs together, they form periods. For example, quaternary period is made up of Pleistocene and Holocene epoch. If we group together the Quaternary, Neogene and Paleogene periods, we have an era that is a relatively larger unit and that is Cenozoic over here. And if we group Cenozoic, Mesozoic and Paleozoic, so we are going to group many eras together that is going to give us eons. So Phanerozoic eon is made up of Paleozoic, Mesozoic and Cenozoic era. Similarly, we may have uh, possibility of a super eon like Precambrian if we group Hadean, Archean and Phenologic. So that's how the geological time scale is being made. This is international chronostratigraphic chart or geological time scale. If you want me to make a detailed video on geological time scale, you can comment below. In this video presentation, we have learned about 
the collection of stratigraphic data and with the help of this stratigraphic data how the stratigraphic columns are made and what are the use of those stratigraphic columns we also have studied that how stratigraphic studies are important in making the geological time scale in next presentation we will study about a stratigraphic classification and a stratigraphic correlation in relatively more detail thank you jai hind jai bharat